Let's kind of start over here again. Your, your name, you might be a little bit, for people watching this tape, you might be a little bit on the end of tape 13. Okay. But we're starting tape 14. I'm glad it ended when it did. And your name is Ernest Riley. Right. Ernest, you were born when? Uh, September 11, 1920. Okay. You're born in Kentucky and you don't know where. Well, I'll tell you, you probably don't remember. But back in those days, they had mills that were a few miles where they took the corn, the farmer brought in the corn, and they ground the meal, and they cracked it for the chickens and all that stuff. And they had mills that did that. And they would, the mill would take like 10 pounds and do 100 for you. Uh -huh. And uh, after things, modern modification would come along with that. Done away with all that. And the post office used them as mail drops. Hi there. Union mills. Well, we're just talking here about uh, the War II. Yeah, World War II, II and that sort of thing. And what's your name? We were going to have a meeting. Well, when's the meeting? I heard it might be at 1 o'clock. 9.30. 9.30. Okay, then. Well, we'll move right along then as fast as we can. No, we'll just go ahead and leave for the library. Okay. 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 Okay, thank you. Well, they bring the corn. Well, they bring the corn in and the meal would say, what do you want? They want 10 pounds of cracked corn, 10 pounds of ground uh, corn for uh, cornmeal and things like that. Mm -hmm. They made the post office use that as a mail drop. And this work with what you want. Really what it was back in Hansburg, back over the hill, back there more than 15, 20 miles. Uh, uh, those days, uh, there's very few automobiles. Uh, Do you have a birth certificate? I have one somewhere. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there was actually one issue. Are, are you sure of your birth date? I'm sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now, your occupation, or let me ask you this, uh, where, where did you grow up then? I grew up here in Portland. Okay. I spent most of my time out on the west side. I see. And uh, what was your occupation? Well, I worked the post office all my life, 38 years. Okay, that being a Portsmouth or Portsmouth post office. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, your address uh, when you were over on the west side, what was that? Oh, God. It was on Rye Run. Uh, they didn't have censors bill, or you know, they didn't have an address like they like they do now. You know, your address now though is what Hillview. Hillview. I live right here, okay. but I lived out in Rosemount for thirty-five years on Distal Lane, right back in McDonald's. You get the picture. Oh, yeah. I know. So this is Hillview Retirement Center, right? The Orchard uh, How much education do you have? I just went through high school. Okay. And uh, are you married, single, divorced, widowed, separated? I'm married twice. My first wife passed away mm -hmm. in uh, 1978. Mm -hmm. I remarried in 1985. So I see. What are two boys? Is that right? Two boys by your first wife or second? First, first wife. Mm -hmm. And what is your second wife's name? Uh, her name was uh, Buckley Noble. Buckley right. Noble. She was a Buckley, but she married a Bill Noble. Noble. Right. Okay. He worked at the post office too with me. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, now, um, your first wife's name? Her name was Dorothea McCormick. Dorothea McCormick. Where was she from? She was from uh, uh, Glasgow, Montana. She was born. Oh. But uh, she, uh, you know, it's a long story. Better way to handle it. Oh, this is okay. When During the Army service. We got married in Fort Benning, Georgia oh. in 1942. But I went in the Army, not like Edgar. I went in uh, April 16, 1941. Before Pearl Harbor. Oh, before the year of Pearl Harbor. And you don't remember, but they, they had, you could sign up for a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, they even had a song, I'll be back in a year, little darling, and all kind of stuff. But of course, you know, I signed up April 16th. You know what happened December 7th, 41. Mm -hmm. That end of that year. Mm -hmm. So I eventually spent four years, six months, and ten days in the service. Oh. And I didn't like it one bit. No. I like the guys. But yeah, you know. the Army. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Now, I try to start a, I try to create a genealogical line mm -hmm. uh, for people watching this, say, a hundred years from now. They might be tracing their reality. Yeah. What were your parents' names? Well, they were all Kentuckians. Uh -huh. And... Uh, uh, butlers. My mother was a butler, and there was a thousand of them down there back in Mansfield. Okay, butler was her butler. name. What was her first name? Bertha. 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 Butler. Okay. What was your father's name? Uh, Ernest Wright. So Ernest Wright. Okay. Now, do you know your father's parents' name? No. Okay. 
name, your mother's parents' name. Uh, Moses Butler. Moses. Moses. I don't remember, I guess, her mother was, she died young. I don't remember her father was Moses Butler. You know, down in. Now you had two sons. What was, were their names? Well, Michael Riley, who lives here in Portsmouth. Oh, school, he just retired. Is that right? Just retired here. Um, who did he teach? Where did he teach? McKinley. McKinley. Most of the time. And then I got another boy who worked up the mill, and he's up in Mansfield at the mill now. What's his name? Uh, Jim Riley. Jim Riley. Until they get things straightened out. Uh, he's ready to retire. In fact, Mike retired last year, and he's supposed to retire this year. Now, Mike have any children? Yeah. Have two kids. Uh, what are their names? Uh, uh, see, Jeff Riley, he's an uh, old uh, computer editor. Worked for a computer company up in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Then he got a boy named, I mean, a girl named Shelly. Lives at home. She's still home. Okay, I see. Now, uh, does uh, Jeff have any children? No. Just got married. Okay, he did. In the last year. Now, how about uh, Jim? Does he have any children? Yeah, he's got three. Okay, what are their names? You didn't know there'd be a test, did you? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> See, there's Kevin and Keith and Kara. Okay. So that's easy up part. They had three kids, Kevin, Keith, and Kara. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kevin and Keith are married. One of them lives in Toledo. One of them lives in Columbus. Mm -hmm. And Kara's still at home. Okay, do they have children? No, no. You know, I don't think they're ever going to have any. Oh. <laughs> Too busy. Yeah. I might have one, but I doubt it. <laughs> okay. All right, well, now you've told me... Uh, uh, a lot of material here. Now let me ask you some material about. Yeah. Uh, if Doris comes and Arlo don't have any Okay. Sure will. All right. Thank you. So you enlisted in 1940 or 41? When was it? Uh, 1941, April 16th. April 16th. I really didn't enlist. I, as I say, they had a program then for draftees. Mm -hmm. See, they had the draft company. Mm -hmm. And people were not too enthused about getting into this war in Europe. That's really not. A while ago, I mentioned the Pearl Harbor changed the United States before the war. But I wanted to get married, but I wanted to get my. They said, You can go in and get your year in. That'll take care of your liability. So I signed up for a year, mm -hmm. April 1641. Of course, Pearl Harbor ran that. Yeah. And of course, after Pearl Harbor, uh, we felt kind of bad because we just signed up for a year and they cut all that out. But thousands of boys all over the country lined up to join us. So, sure. so we felt kind of, mm -hmm. hey, come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent four years, six months, and ten days. Now, when were you discharged? I was discharged uh, in uh, December, someday in December in 45. Okay. We come right over from overseas to uh, Indian Town Gap. And the discharge there, and they wanted us to stay. See, I was a my parents. That's that strikes. That's uh -huh. 1941. Yeah, I got started. Mm -hmm. I was in the Fourth Armor then, mm -hmm. not the tenth. Mm -hmm. I was at Pine Camp, New York. This says uh, Sergeant Major. Well, that's what I was really. My okay. kids had that name. Uh -huh. uh, I was promoted to uh, in the in the tank divisions like this. Uh -huh. They were Sergeant Majors uh -huh. in each battalion, the number one ranking. Non-com was a sergeant major. Mm -hmm. Well, they, the division commander called us down and says, if you guys will sign up for four more years, there was, see, I think there was six sergeant majors in this, in the 10th Army Division. Mm -hmm. They would, we sign up for four years, they'd make us first lieutenants because they were scared of Russia. And everybody was leaving the service. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to stay. Well, Unless you had a rank, a big rank. Uh -huh. They wanted to go home. Uh -huh. Well, there was one guy. And what's peculiar? I'll get that. Uh, what's peculiar? There was a lady who lives right here now. Juanita Lane. Uh -huh. Her husband was named Kenner Lane. We called him Red Lane. He was one of the very few that enlisted. And uh, he was discharged right here. He was later lived here. He died right here. Here three or four years ago. She's still living. But uh, uh, he got a lieutenant colonel. They wanted people so bad to stay in the service. But if they had made me General MacArthur, I wouldn't stay because I hated the service. Well, I liked the guys and everything, but. Didn't like the way it was run. What was your rank when you were discharged? Uh, Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major. Okay. Now, um, uh, do you remember where, where were you when uh, Pearl Harbor, when you heard about that? 
Pine Camp, New York, 4th Armored Division. 4th Armored Division, when Pearl Harbor came along. In fact, uh, why don't we zero in, hold that one up and that one up. And, uh, and we went. Well, as soon as you heard about Pearl Harbor then, uh, you, were in, you were in where? Pine Camp? Pine Camp, New York. New York. Where is that located? It's close Remember? to Watertown. Okay. Close to Watertown. It probably isn't there anymore, is it? Yeah, it's called uh, something else now. Okay. It's got another name. While we're talking there, that looks like the combat infantryman's badge at That's the top right. of your picture. You were in combat. It looks like the Bronze Star. Right. And uh, and that looks like the Purple Heart. That's right. You were wounded. Yeah. And then uh, what is the one below there? I'm not... Oh, that's something like... Some, and okay, kind of all right. And uh, there's a little plaque. You say your your kids had that made for you, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, well, now, you mean this year? Uh, that no. What you're holding up? Oh yeah, this thing here. Okay. They they had that made. I don't know what it was. Okay. What's they that? Got these out of a trunk or something. <laughs> oh gosh. Well. Now, someone sent this through the mail. I have hold that up. Hold that that they sent through the mail. What's all that business? This is the. The World War II 50th Anniversary Collection of Eisenhower, Dollar, and Roosevelt Dimes. The Battle of the Bow. Battle of the Bow. Oh, Somebody cool. sent it through the mail to me because I, I received that. You know how the service is. Uh -huh. I was in a hospital in England when our outfit our outfit was in the vault. Is that the 10th Armored? 10th Armored. They were at the, they were at Bastogne, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's what this is. Okay. The Battle of the Bow is Bastogne. Yeah. And uh, okay. I got the medal, but just because it's my outfit. See what I mean? Uh huh. All right. My outfit. All right. And, uh, but I was really in England in the hospital. I was the 101st general uh -huh. in the hospital. I came back and rejoined my outfit and went, you know, for the rest of the war. Okay. Uh, too much when I got back. Hi there.
run well, back or forth. I wanted to get into fourth armor mm-hmm. and stay there. Mm-hmm. But you don't do any army what you want to do. You yeah, know, that's the truth. But that, that was a lot of fun. Okay. And then how long were you in Fort Thomas then? Oh, I was in Fort Thomas uh, just a week, a couple of weeks. Okay. So going to Fort Knox and on to camp. Can't go until they got a place for you, you know. All right. So I was at, uh, I wasn't for time. It was a lovely place to stay because you could step outside the, on the street and catch the streetcar for a nickel downtown Cincinnati. <laughs> we Were you them. married at that time? No. Okay. I got Were you married engaged? To, Were you yeah, engaged at that time? Yeah. Okay. I went out to Seattle, Washington on a train, picked up my wife, and brought her back to. Uh, when did you do that? This was in 42. Uh-huh. And uh, we got married in uh, Fort. Fort Benning, Fort Benning, Georgia, uh-huh. and we got married in Phoenix City, Alabama. So That's right across the Chattahoochee River from, from Fort Benning, Benning in uh-huh. right, right there at the river. Yeah, and then we went from there to Camp Gordon, Georgia, mm-hmm. because Benning at that time they was uh, starting the 101st Airborne and the Wax. There's a woman here who's a major in the Wax down there when I was there. I see. Uh, she's sure. here right now. Okay. But uh, we uh, got married there. From Camp Gordon, you went overseas. Did you go to England? We went. No, not really. They got us in the records with all but What we did, they were going in D Day. What, what division were you in? At the Empire. You're in that by this time. You're in the tent. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we didn't really go to England. Of course, I was able later on in the hospital. But we went from the United States straight to France. The Cherbourg Peninsula. I see. And they had it set up so it would be a week or two after June 16th D Day. And we are, we're not like infantry. We were an armor division. We had to have a room to put us on the. You couldn't run up the bank. We had tanks. Right. And uh, they figured we could take two or three weeks to, to get a bridge here. That's what they call it for our tanks. Mm-hmm. So we took and headed right for Cherbourg. And by the time we got there, they kicked the Germans back a few miles. And we hit there and hit the hedgerows. Mm-hmm. Run. We went right, right off the ship right on the bank, the right forward. In the battle? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we were in the, uh, the battle for Paris. We didn't get to march through Paris like a lot of them did. Basically, the French. Mm-hmm. But, and we went to, we wound up, we were in Luxembourg. Mm-hmm. We were in. Uh, Belgium, you get read on the same Luxembourg, Belgium, and Thionville, France, because this was the northern part of the, the world over there. But Eisenhower was always getting after Pat for something, but he didn't want something done. He called on Pat. We went from Luxembourg, Dulon's Luxembourg, and we headed south. We went through the, the Seventh Army was south of us. We were third of the army. The first army is north, on north of us. We went all the way down through Germany. We went right to the German troops there. Because he heard they was forming some kind of a big army. You know, this is way, this after the wall, this is January, February, March, and that area there of 45, mm-hmm. before the war ended. Mm-hmm. And we went all the way down. We went up in Austria. Here. Our headquarters of up northern France. Here we were down in Austria. But he did that with Pat. Uh, he did say, You send a combat command. So we didn't fight as a 10th Army Division. It was 10th Army Division. Uh-huh. We didn't fight as 10th Army Division. Uh-huh. They had what they called the combat commands. Mm-hmm. And uh, just like us, uh, they'd say, You're going to be Sergeant Major. You're going to have this and that. They'd be a, a platoon of uh, 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 infantry. They'd be a platoon of uh, engineers. They'd be a uh, Something you never heard of, probably tank destroyers. Did you ever hear that? Yes, I have. See, they saved our division. Mm-hmm. Because we went into uh, France, the German had an 88 on his tank. We had 75s. Uh huh. We were the tank destroyers had. They had 105. Yeah. And we took them everywhere our tanks went. We took a TD tank destroyer. Because the Germans had a side. They had more than one. You had Sherman tanks. Uh-huh. We mm-hmm. even had 37 millimeters. Uh-huh. Well, see, them Germans had 88. 37 on a, on a tank? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 37. But our main gun on the tanks was 75 millimeters. But God, 75 and 80 is a long ways from 88. Right. And Germans could eat us up. Right. But we had these big TVs right behind. 
105. That's a lot bigger than 88. And a lot of people never mentioned the tank destroyers, but they were wonderful. Uh, now, when you, as soon as you hit the beach there, you, you landed in Sherbrooke. Did you go through the town and then into the hedgerows? I can't tell you. Now, this would be your first taste of the, the action. Well, yeah. Was everybody scared? What, what, was the, what was that like? Well, some were, some were just amazing. I don't know. Uh, I think the, the main feeling in our outfit that the, they want to get in and whip the Germans. Mm-hmm. Just like I was pretty high. Just like in, when Pearl Harbor come along, all everybody wanted to do was get their time in the Army and get out. Uh-huh. But then they wanted to beat the hell out of the Japanese. So everybody wanted to. Uh, you ever been to Oregon? No, I haven't. Well, you'd have to see that. Uh, Arizona sitting on, still there right today, sitting on the bottom of the ocean there in Pearl Harbor. 1,100 and some guys. They still there. They got their names on a big plaque. Yeah. Either there. a father and son. I've been there. I see. Either a father and son. I see. On that list. And you can go right there today, and they'll show you a movie of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Now they got the Japanese films all together. So it's really something to see. They take you a movie, and then they take you out to the Arizona. It's still sitting on, you know, mm-hmm. you look down, look, look down, see it, and they got a place there you can stand and they have a ceremony okay. honoring all the dead and, uh, that's really quite a how is a uh, by the way how is a armored division broken down I mean you've got a division you've got a what a brigade or regiment or well no, no, that would be an infantry but now at one time when we first started out in 41 42 we had a regiment we had a regimental headquarters mm-hmm. and we had three battalions and a supply company mm-hmm. but later on they realized that Come back to this combat command. Let me see. Hello there. Uh, you want to sit down there? Or we can get together here in a little bit. Be through a man. That's the guy. Okay. But anyway, uh, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about, talking about the tank division. Well, yeah. The when they first started out, we had regiments. Uh-huh. And then they, they uh, took them, uh, done away with the regiments, made what we call separate battalions. Mm-hmm. In other words, a battalion was, uh, is that in room? That's not right. Uh, in other words, a battalion was complete. Uh-huh. You had a headquarters service company, headquarters company, service company, and ABC, and then the second would be DEF, and the third would be GHM. Okay. Alphabetical. Uh, but they did away with the regimental headquarters. They did away with the regimental officers, and everything was battalions. So the simple reason that I told you a while ago, they didn't fight as a division. They fought as combat commands. They'll take an imp- uh, maybe an infantry battalion from the, from the 30th infantry, mm-hmm. you know, and an engineer battalion from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And you were all in a unit, and you went forward with whatever they needed, they had. Now what was your, your job? Were you a driver, a gunner? Or I, had my own, I had my own vehicle, uh-huh. a Jeep, a Jeep, and I Travel right with the battalion commander. Mm-hmm. Every time the battalion commander uh, wanted something done, he told me. Mm-hmm. And I told him, looked at the executive officer, mm-hmm. whatever. And I went and done whatever he told me to do. Okay. And what's funny, our battalion commander, I remember the day he was wounded, and he just died here mm-hmm. a month ago. Stanley Weiner was his name. Okay. He just died a month ago. So you, 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 then you busted your way through the hedgerows. Were you in the St. Lowe battle or St. Lowe? Or? I remember the St. Lowe battle. We weren't in. We okay. were off to the right a little bit. But we went, uh, uh, we really busted out. The Germans were all they were doing. We seen the Germans, they were running, flying. They, were, they weren't staying stop and fight. Okay. And uh, once in a while, they would set up a trap. Like I got wounded. Uh, one of the most dangerous things over there was the war. You've heard of war this time. Uh, that that mortar shell was a horrible thing, and just like artillery, only they could be a hundred, two or three hundred yards away and hit you with a mortar shell over the hill. They could have bodies, somebody laying up there on the ground. You missed it, you went a hundred yards away. In fact, to give you an example, my brother was in the Third Army, he was in the 95th Infantry Division, and I went up there once, and we were crossing France. To visit him, he's supposed to be in reserve. And I got there, and he wasn't in reserve. He's up on the front. I crawled up the street and went up to church steeple. And I said, "Hey, buddy, what are you doing up here?" Such a brother. My brother was in a mo- in a 
uh, church steeple with a hole in the wall directing, directing he was a uh, mortar fire on the Germans across the Moselle River in the Southern Bay of France. That's Moselle there. River. And I said, hey, buddy, let me show you something. Hi there. Good morning. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. Good. Did, did you want to get involved don't, here? Don't believe. The only way I can is you can get me out by 1030. I, I can't make a guarantee. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get together and get somebody. Okay. I'll, I'll be coming back. Oh, okay. Okay. What was your name? Juanita Lane. Juanita Lane. Okay, yeah. Miss Lane. Uh, we, we know each other from some We do. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll take your word for it. Okay. Uh, we'll uh, we'll get together this. Okay. Summer. Okay. We're in the army. Okay. Very good. I don't know what she's saying. Okay. Were you a whack? No, I was a nurse. Okay. <laughs> I think, according to him, I was wacky. <laughs> of course, I knew her husband. Uh, He's a pretty good guy. You're talking about. He was a better army guy than I was. I can tell you that. Talking about visiting a, uh, in, in a church steeple. What was the deal? What was going on? Well, uh, they said you can go up there for five minutes. You have to crawl up the street because the Germans. The street was down below with a sidewalk about a foot, and I had to crawl up and then go in the front door. What was the name of the town? Um, I don't know. I think it's Dumont, Luxembourg, or something. Okay. On the Moselle River. Moselle River. He's at the top of a steeple, and he's and all serving and bringing in more. But there was other other guys up there. Okay. An airplane. Uh, Spotter, you know, got right. in airplanes, right? And okay. that's what they would do. They would get to a church steeple, and a lot of them, they just shoot it down. It was a church, and that's where they directed their fire uh, from there, from view where they could see across the river to so tell somebody what to do behind them. What did your brother think? He was amazed, just amazed. And I said, I can just stay for two minutes, and he was just amazed. And he said, Well, let's get together as soon as it's over. And the next time I saw him, he's the only guy I saw over there I knew. He was in Marseille, France. He'd been wounded. He was wounded the same week I was. He was back in England at the same time. But by the time I found out he was in, in a hospital in England, uh, he was already gone. Oh. So when I was coming out of the where? Uh, back going back to the front. Okay. But they give him limited service because mm-hmm. he got a, a, a concussion. He still got his today. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, they took him, put him in charge of a Marseille, and they had a lot of uh, repel deaths. Replaced people with repel deaths. Uh-huh. But, uh, uh, well, how are you with uh, it? Mortar shell. I got cut back from mortar shell. Okay. And then along with a lot of other people. Okay. okay. And uh, that particular mortar shell, did that sent you to the hospital in. Uh, in uh, okay. I've had surgery in Paris, and they flew us back in. I stayed there to recover. Okay. What happened after that? Did you go back to the front? Or Went back to my same outfit. Same uh-huh. Identical, same job. Okay. They had it all ready for me, and I just okay. got back there. They sent us across France in a train, and, and the truck took us right back to the outfit, and I resumed my same job I uh-huh. had before. I see. A lot of outfits didn't do that. The American Army took their wounded back, mm-hmm. unless they were unable. Like our battalion commander, he was unable to work. Mm-hmm. But, uh, okay. It's quite neat. Do you want to say how you got that bronze star? You don't have to. I don't really. Okay. Um, now you got to Austria, you say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what happened there? Well, we got to Berkshire's car, which you have heard of. Yes. That's where we're, our job yeah. was to go to Berkshire's car. You actually got it there? We actually got it there. And went up to and it was all a lie. It was all a lie. What do you mean? Well, Hitler had people there, but there wasn't no army there or no, no finagling going on. Mm-hmm. And we heard once that the high rank of men, in the, including uh, Hitler, were going into Birchus and then Birchus and then flying into South America to yeah. avoid getting the yeah. war. We know he died uh, uh, for land. Uh, but we went right down there, stayed right there, and we. Uh, when the war ended, we went right down. Look, you're in the Alps. And we went into Garnish Park to Kershaw. And we stayed in Oprah Amagon, our Garnish Park to Kershaw, until uh, we came home. And we came down to Marseille. And well, the, uh, the Burgess Garden wasn't the 101st there also? Did you have some contact with them? We was with the 101st. Oh, sure. So the 101st was in Bastogne. They were in Bastogne. Okay. And it was... Uh, 
Oh, there was uh, all your Eli troops were sent to Birch's garden because they had some kind of a rumor. And what they wanted to do was stop the migration of high ranking German officers to South America. They didn't stop. Uh, quite a few of them got out of Germany and uh, from Birch's garden in there, but we stopped. What are, it stopped when you got there. Oh, uh, I understand they had a full wine cellar there at Birch's garden. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> Uh, you want to remember the Germans drank well. They drank wine and beer. Uh-huh. And I remember, and we'll forget, we got there and the war ended. And an Italian commander sent six trucks, put me in charge of them. We went all the way down in Italy to get six truckloads of beer to bring back. And that wasn't for the troops. That was mostly for the civilians. Oh, really? The oh, civilians needed that. Well, we had to beat them. Uh, how did you get along with the civilians after you were well, defeated their army and their nation? We got along with them very well. At least I don't remember having any, any really problems. We had now where we were, uh, uh, we had other, a lot of other people besides Germans. You had a we had a Polish prison camp there. And we were close to we were that kind of, A lot of people. Did you go to that Yeah, I was there. Take any photographs of that? No, they wouldn't let us. But uh, did they march the people through the the civilians? Oh, yeah. March them through, let them see that stuff. Well, see, uh, we have what they call, call defraternization. 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 And we made all the Germans in our area. In fact, I helped do it. They had to go to see these prison camps. Mm-hmm. They saw movies of the cruelty of the Germans, uh, even in Bastogne. They lined up 80 American soldiers. Uh, Malmody, wasn't it? Murdered them. Murdered them. And I remember we had a trial right there in Garnish with two British officers, I mean, German, all British, German officers, and uh, that uh, gave the command to kill the American soldiers. We killed them, took them right outside, and lined them up and shot them dead. Was that in Bastogne or Burgess Garden? Where you well, was, uh, we were down in Burgess Garden, but they had actually committed the crime of in Bastogne. Uh, these two uh, German officers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, now, what were the German people's reaction when they saw this? They pretend like they didn't know anything about it and all that? They didn't believe uh, mm-hmm. uh, See, they don't think this Jewish thing is a big deal as we, as we do. Most of them, because they've been taught that uh, uh, they were the, Their main theme, and reading about Ein and some other things, uh, they, Hitler really had them thinking they were the spirit of race. Mm-hmm. They were it. The German people were, you know, a little better than the Jewish and the, and the Austrian and everybody else. You know, they really didn't believe that. Mm-hmm. But I think they took a lot of it with a grain of salt. And after all, they were whipped bad. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Did you get along with the French civilians? I did not care for the English or the French. You know, <laughs> it is. You know, I, the reason I asked it, the reason I asked it, I've heard some other people say we got along with the Germans. Oh, I, <laughs> I did not like the the French. Was the first ones in the war so over told us to get out of there. We should have told them to go jump in the lake. We got out. We don't have no troops in France today. And uh, uh, I didn't care for the English people when. Uh, Eisenhower was made a supreme commander. They said he'd be a corporal in our army. And, uh, uh, they were, uh, they, and, uh, they took Montgomery and knighted him the next day. The Queen did, and the King did. They, uh, and uh, I didn't care if the English or French ever did. I went to Ireland, went to my birthplace, is where I right? came from. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you a little something you won't believe. Uh, they said, oh, this one place, I showed them where, I had to show them where I wanted to go. I was on a delay en route from the hospital in England to Birmingham to catch a boat to go back, start back to my outfit. And uh, they said, you can't go here because the German submarines come in there at night and get refueled. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, Could be. You know. <laughs> See, now, Ireland did not, uh, they weren't they they were with the Germans. They, and a lot of them hated the English too. Well, because I think a lot of them had to do with religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you say you met Pat. I tell you, I'm glad you brought How many times? Well, the first time I saw General Patton, we got down to Fort Benning, July 15, 1942, and we were supposed to activate the 10th Armor Division. Well, when the trains pulled in Fort Benning there, we all got up. What are they going to do? And in 
marched us up, and there Pat stood on the tank. You know, you know what he looked like. Uh-huh. Oh. And he welcomed us at Fort Benning, you know, mm-hmm. and he told us we were going to be in the 10th Armored Division, that he would not be our commander because the 1st and 2nd Armored Division, uh, that time, 1st was in Knox and 2nd was through Benning, were planning already on going into Africa mm-hmm. with the British and fighting and everything. Well, I saw him there. And then when uh, we got overseas, first officer I saw after we got into combat was back. I saw him more than my company commander. I mean, he was everywhere. You'd see him at a crossroad. He'd be bombing it and uh, artillery. He'd be go in, go in. Wasn't a friend of nothing. Everybody admired him. Mm-hmm. And then uh, July 15, 1945, our division was three years old. That's three years later, from 1942, down to Benny, and Patton had already, I could kick him out over some, something, and uh, he made a big talk, and passed, we passed the review at Garmisch, Germany, mm-hmm. Garmisch Park, Patton was there, and he told us that we were gonna, weren't going to be at the beach anymore, we didn't know that, he said, you're going back to the States and be deactivated, and I want to thank everybody because all the old guys that he was talking to had been in one of his outfits. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he was wounded. I'm not wounded, but he was hurt at that hospital. Awesome. Did you ever shake hands with him? Yeah, shook, shook hands with him and talked to him. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Wonderful guy. He had a voice that didn't uh, fit his. Uh, what was his voice like? It was lighter than what you expect from that. Okay. You know, a little lighter. Uh, did you ever meet Eisenhower? Yeah. Okay. You shake hands with him? Never shook hands with him. I've seen him here in Portugal. Oh, is that right? But I've uh, seen him over there, too. Okay. How about um, Montgomery? Never seen Montgomery, but I saw that other general that was under Pat. can't think of his name. I've met him a couple times. Oh, you see. Right. Who would that be? Did you ever meet McCullough? No. You know what I mean? Kind of who you mean? Okay. No, I was trying to think of another general. He was a Kind of a poor guy, and they put him eventually. He went ahead of Patton. Bradley. Bradley. Yeah. Right. Bradley. Mm-hmm. General Bradley, Bradley met him. Uh-huh. Uh, in fact, he was the commander of the Third Army. And then I think Bradley came out of the war and become the VA administrator mm-hmm. because he was very well, an ordinary soldier, and he very well liked. He was very, very well liked, Bradley. Well, uh, Mr. Riley, uh, what's the best thing that ever happened to you in the Army? Getting out? <laughs> that was a great, you know, I was funny, funny like that. Uh, uh, my brother kind of liked the service. You know, I never did like it. I just didn't like that. Uh, and here I was in dining at quarters. I was with the big mugs all the time. And I, and, but I'm just so glad. When I come back, uh, my wife said, well, um, the only thing is, you think we can get by I said, well, we'll do something we'll get by. But anyway, uh, I, uh, I could have stayed in mm-hmm. and got a personal tennis commission. Mm-hmm. But darn it, I just hate to live on an army post. Right. I got, now, we've got a grandson in the Navy. He's an officer in the Navy. Is that right? And he's over in Sicily, and his <laughs> folks are out in California. They like it better out there. Um, did you keep in touch with any of your friends after you have reunions? You know, it's funny. Uh, we have a reunion every year. It's funny you said that. Because, see, it was Saturday. My phone rang. Joe Moore, who lives in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, an old Army buddy of mine, lives in the service together. He called him. He's making his reservation. We're having our division. We have uh, Labor Day. Every year we have our division as a reunion. And they're having it in Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And we're working together. Me and him are probably going to be there. Okay. And uh, we're trying to... We always call up some guy. But now Joe was in my outfit during the war. But all the main thing he does is call up and say, Ernie, so and so guy. Because he's one of the officers in the... In the he's one of the officers in the, uh, our retirement thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's sad. we got more women coming to the World War II Convention than that. Well, you take most of us guys who are 80 years old. Yeah. You know, just like me. Look at them. What's hair? 95. Yeah. <laughs> it's up there. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Anything you'd like to add? Well, we got you here. Well, we fact, covered pretty, pretty thing, everything. Uh, I just uh, I just think we're, we're very fortunate to have had Marshall 
Eisenhower. These are my favorite heroes. I think Marshall was a tremendous officer uh, for Pick and Eisenhower. And I thought Eisenhower was a tremendous person. And I thought Patton, uh, he, sometimes he said things he shouldn't say. I agree that. I wouldn't have said it. I thought about it in his book. But you got to remember that MacArthur and Eisenhower were a much higher socially sociable than, than uh, I mean, Eisenhower was down to Bob. Mm-hmm. He was a poor guy from Kansas. Where MacArthur and, and Patton were very rich families. Mm-hmm. Out of West Point, out of everything. Mm-hmm. And they were kind of upset because Eisenhower got all the glory. Mm-hmm. But you had to admire Marshall. He picked Eisenhower because he was the smartest. He knew leadership. He, he knew leadership. And, and I thought, boy, that took guts to pick someone ahead of MacArthur and, and Patton. And he picked Eisenhower, made him Supreme Allied Commander. We could have lost the war. Hey, we could have lost the war right here. The bad little boat. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, I want to thank okay. you for coming in. Thank you. John McHenry. John McHenry. Thanks for everything you did. Okay, bye. Okay.